and welcome to Southern Maryland Week in Review Edition, a partnership between the Southern Maryland News and the Forest Career and Technology Center's TV video production program. I'm Caleb. And I'm Trent. And here's what we have for you today on this week's SOMD Wire. California resident Kristen Taylor testified via Zoom on behalf of Senate Bill 273 and House Bill 275. These bills would ban the production of per and para polyfluorokil, commonly referred to as PFAs. The bills were named after her late husband, George Taylor, who passed away from metastatic neuroendocrine cancer related to occupational hazards. Kristen Taylor said she decided to get involved not only to honor the memory of her late husband, but also for his brothers and sisters who are firefighters today. One of the seminal moments in a child's life is the moment when they master the skill of riding a bike. Kindergartners at William A. Diggs and William B. Wade Elementary Schools got to take the journey together as part of the eight-week all-kids bike program. Learning how to ride a bike provides an opportunity to implement skills such as balance, speed, and pathways in a different but highly effective way, said Matt Galanka, a content specialist for health and physical education. Students started out learning balance on a bike, then shifted to riding. Pickleax and middle school 8th graders got a chance to hear a first-hand account of stories from the civil rights movement from someone who lived it. Joan Mulholland, 80, of Arlington, Virginia, shared her experiences during a Wednesday morning assembly as a part of a program by the Joan Trumpower Mulholland Foundation. Mulholland, a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, a historically black sorority, gave students an eyewitness view on some of the sit-ins and protests that helped shape civil rights movement. One thing led to another. It was like sort of throwing pebbles in a pond and seeing how far the ripples would go, Mulholland said of her experiences. The Charles County School Board could have a new tool in dealing with missing classes due to wintry weather, possibly foregoing traditional snow days. The board decided on a 5-3 vote on February 8th to allow the public school system staff to develop and submit a plan for virtual schooling during snow days for the remainder of the school year to the Maryland State Department of Education. The plan, as approved, would help conserve having to make up snow days at the end of the school year. The plan would not automatically go away with the traditional snow day, but instead give the school systems an option to hold classes virtually when weather is bad to avoid extending the school year or taking away from spring break or making up days. Now turning to sports. One year after the Maryland Student Hockey League season was among the casualties of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the Charles County Cougars captured the Chesapeake Cub, Cup and Griffin Hayes tailed less than 30 seconds into overtime to lift the squad to a 4-3 victory over Huntingtown. Cougars teammate Braylon Swore's goal erased a 3-2 Huntingtown lead with six minutes remaining. Then Hayes ended the drama early in the first 10-minute overtime session. On Tuesday afternoon in the world of women's basketball, Westlake recorded its fifth straight victory when the Wolverines cruised to a 62-39 triumph over the visiting Calvert. Westlake senior Keonti McNelly, who played a key role for the Wolverines two years ago when they won the 2A South Region title, led the host with 20 points on Tuesday. I think our defense was the key tonight. McNelly said, we started the game quickly, we got the big lean in the first quarter, and that was the key. Personally, I thought I started out slow, I finally got into a rhythm in the second half. I think we did really well. That's all we have for you on this week's edition of SOMD Wire. This new brief has been provided by the Southern Maryland News. For more details, visit SOMDnews.com. I'm Caleb. And I'm Trent, signing off.